So meta advertising, paid advertising, custom audiences. I'm pretty sure you've heard one of these words at least once in your lifetime scrolling across YouTube or Instagram, wherever you might be popular on. But anyway, what we're gonna discuss in today's video is we're gonna take you through exactly how we create custom audiences for our clients. Because we have an agency, uh, one of my businesses, we run paid ads for our clients, increasing their businesses or leads, uh, sales, whatever it might be. But if you want to look at creating custom audiences for your business or brand on Meta as a platform, you're going to learn a lot today. We're going to touch things regarding uh, custom audiences for your Meta pixel, catalog views and engagements on your Facebook and Instagram profiles, all the way to video views and potential. If you do have a customer list, how can you use that customer list to create a custom audience that you can implement on Meta platform? Now, why would you want to advertise or create custom audiences? Well, it's pretty simple because if you have new offers or you have current offers that you want to retarget to those people, you're going to have to have uh, custom audiences in place. All right. Those custom audiences also, like I just said, help you use that data so that if you want to in the future retarget them with new offers, you can do that too. All right. So this is going to be a very intuitive video, very quick and simple. I hope that if you learn a lot from this, you can implement it straight after this video. And that's my plan. So let's jump in and let's get started. All right. So here we are inside a dummy account. As you can see, there is currently zero audiences. All right. So this is the perfect account to play with. Let me just show you exactly how we get started. Now, for example, you're going to be introduced with something like this. Should you have no audiences in place currently? But if you do get to your uh, audiences tab, um, if you don't know how to get there, you just go to all tools under your business manager and look for audiences. You can also look at the left menu here and find it over there. Like I said, you'll be greeted with this long message should you not have anything currently in place. But if you do, here we go. All we have to do is click on this. As you can see, custom audiences is the very first one that we want to look at. So custom audiences. And what do we have to look at here? So here you can see there's various, various different data points that we can use to obviously create custom audiences. These data points, such as your sources and from meta sources, are the two different categories. But under your sources, you have your website. So that's obviously your pixel and collecting uh, the data that the pixel collects will obviously then be fed here. And this is what you're going to be using it for. Um, you can have app activity should you have a separate app, but you need to have obviously your meta integration and developer access being done on there properly. Otherwise, you won't have any data. Um, here's your catalog. Should you have an e-commerce store, your catalog will obviously be connected to your Facebook or your Meta account. And then if you've done it correctly, it will also help you collect the data from the people and how they interact with that catalog. Um, customer list. This is the one I mentioned in the beginning of the video. Should you have a long email list that you can use of names and emails and you have the permission to use their data, you've got consent from them, basically, um, you will then be able to upload something like that to Meta. Now, this is where it gets tricky. People think that if they do that, it's going to target those exact people, but that's not the case. Okay. How this works is Facebook will probably, and I've heard the rule around this is if you've got a list of 1000 people, the rule is it only basically sucks in about 50% of that. And then it uses that 50% to find people who are similar or alike. It doesn't actually contact. If you've got John in your list, it doesn't contact John directly with your ads. Okay. It looks for people similar. So people's data is also protected to an, to an essence, but don't quote me on this stuff. Go read up the Facebook support. If you really, really want to know how that works. All I know is this is what we hear. This is how we see things getting pulled through from our clients. But anyway, onto the next one, offline activity also has to do with in-store activity that you might be able to share with Facebook, etc. Um, you can obviously carry on reading about this. It's rarely used this one in our agency. Most of our clients are online, so we rarely use this one. So before I carry on with the video, I just wanted to slip this little thing in here quickly. I just want to mention if you are looking for someone to do this for you, you know, run leads, make more sales, grow your business online, maybe help you structure the thing from scratch, beginner to advanced. We've helped multiple various different clients from international and local sort this type of stuff out and make it very successful for them. So if you're looking for this, my agency can help you do this. It's 333.co.za. I'll leave a link in the description. Make sure you hit up that. And if you are looking for maybe some mentorship, I'll also leave a link there for you. You can get in direct consultation with me and I'll help you sort out whatever you're currently doing. If you're beginner to advanced, it doesn't matter. We'll help you try and figure things out. So without further ado, let's get back in the video. Meta sources is video footage. So any videos that you've posted on your pages, uh, on your Instagram profile, reels, etc., or maybe ads that you've run in the past, you can obviously look up the timestamps on these and collect the, the viewer foot, um, statuses from there and add them to a separate custom audience. 
lead forms the same. So if you have any lead forms on Meta itself, uh, not landing pages and stuff like that, on Meta itself, you will then be able to capture the data here as well and then use that as a custom audience. Uh, instant experiences, rarely used as well, um, purely because in our lo local vicinity, South Africa, shops is not an eligible thing anymore. So it's kind of difficult for us to use something like instant experience. International clients, no issue. Instant experiences is basically just giving a customer an instant experience of your brand the moment they click on your ad. Um, it can be a form and then a whole bunch of other goodies. It can show them a whole new shop. It can do whatever you want, basically. Go and read up about it, it's pretty interesting. And then shopping is obviously inside the, the Meta app itself. Like I said now, South Africa is ineligible regarding shopping. So if you're overseas um, and you're eligible for shopping on Meta platform, then you can obviously use this as a custom audience base. Instagram account, Facebook page, those are engagement based stuff. So how many people and past engagers have touched your pages and interacted with your content. You can use those events, the same thing. And then obviously Facebook listings. Do you have anything in Marketplace? Wow, that was quite a ramble. So let's create the very first one, which is probably the one that people most want to understand how to do. And that is obviously looking for past viewers on your website. Okay. You always want to go for this guy first, purely because everyone does have a website. Well, hopefully. And if you do have a website, you want to retarget the people who are past viewers. They've been on there for the last whatever amount of time. But as I mentioned, this is a dummy account, so I just had to quickly make sure about everything. The source itself, though, is the pixel that you've used for the website. So if you have your website set up, you've put your pixel tags on the website. This is what you'll select here. As you can see, I have nothing to select. Like I mentioned, dummy account. But what you are most concerned about is once you've selected your pixel, the first thing you're going to look at is look at all website visitors. OK, there's going to be a whole lot more options here should you have a lot of data collected there'll be a lot more options here that you can choose from and if you have an e-commerce store there'll be other things that you can select such as past purchases um, viewed content pages um, initiated checkout add to carts all those lovely goodies will also be under this list of um, points but obviously now because of this video i have only got the three to choose from we are mostly going to be concerned with all website visitors. So let's choose that. And as you can see, the moment you go up top here, we can then see you can use a maximum of 180 days time frame. All right. So that's past 180 days, not future, past 180. Now you can enter these number of days and you can separate it either by 30 days. You can separate it by how many days you want it to be. I like to go maximum on most of these things. So maximum is 180 days collection of data and that you can use to create this custom audience for yourself. I like to name these audiences, obviously. So whatever it is, custom audience and then website visitors, so web visitors and 180 days. So we can distinguish between the time frames that we are using. And all you have to do is click create. This one won't work now, probably because it doesn't have a source. Never mind, it does work <laughs> for some reason. But once you've created your first order, uh, custom audience, you'll see the name that you created here for the custom audience, the type of custom audience that it is, and what are you using as the source for it. And then obviously here, it will tell you your estimated audience size. Should you be getting a lot of traffic to your website, then this will definitely be a lot bigger. But in most cases, this will obviously, the moment you've said create audience, it will say populating uh, as a worst case scenario. That doesn't mean it's not going to ever get there. As you can see, it is saying populated, uh, populating. It is obviously just looking for the data behind this pixel, trying to understand how many people it can collect for this, and then obviously give you some estimate of a number. All right. And then obviously your date created, audience ID, etc. All right. So that's how to create website visitors. Now, much, much to similar extent, we're going to then create various others, if you will. So custom audience. Um, like I said, I don't have any others to use for website, but you will probably have more if you have um, a lot more data. You have an e-commerce store, you'll have initiate checkouts and all those other goodies like I just mentioned. But I want to show you the next one. Now, the next guy is a customer list. Should you have a customer list of a few thousand, a few hundred, whatever you have, you can use this. I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. Once you collect, um, you're going to have to export your customer list as a csv file first now if you have no idea how to sort that csv csv file out you're obviously going to have to first download facebook's template here and once you download it it'll then show you exactly how to space it out for facebook to understand but it would need to include all of these points that you can see at the bottom here and then obviously other data that cannot be pulled through won't be pulled through 
Great, so ours is set up correctly. So let me show you. Once I do that, I want to upload a file. As you can see, this is a CSV file. It's a version of an Excel file, comma, separated variables, whatever that word means. Uh, this is how it accepts the data for you. So once you select that and you put it in, it will then say it's uploaded the list. You can then specify, does this list include a column that has a value towards it? So this is e-commerce based companies. If you have a value column, meaning average order value, amount spent per person, uh, number of orders per person, you can then select yes, and then it will find, uh, or you'll have to help it find the column that has the average spend or total spend per person. As you can see here is mine two in the list of this dummy sheet. And then we put that as our value. This just helps it understand a little bit more about what type of customer is spending and what type of customer is spending how much. Okay. You can obviously then name the customer, whatever you want. In this instance, we're going to just leave it as is for the sake of the video, name it, whatever you want, because it is an export of your current Excel, uh, you know, customer list on your website. And then you're going to have to check the box and agree to their terms and conditions, which obviously has to deal with the consent form and poppy and all that stuff. So make sure you know what you're doing and that you have consent. Once you click next, you're going to have a mapping column come up next. What is a mapping column? It basically shows you in the map side what has been mapped automatically by Facebook. And if you go to the action needed side, you're going to have to go and manually map this stuff. Now, this is nothing crazy, so don't skip the video here. All you need to do is basically look for the filter that it needs. So as you can see, these are names. All we want to do is make sure that we put first name towards that and then Last active we cannot use because there is no um, date or timestamp regarding that. Sign up was the button. We don't have anything for that. Number of orders. Can we use that? Uh, no, we cannot use number of orders. Average order value. We cannot use that uh, as well. We can put the country in. So their country. We can put the city in. And we can put their region, which is state or province. All right. So we don't have a zip code here for any instance. All that's going to happen is with all these things that are not pulled through or mapped, let me use the right terminology, means that only the things that are mapped will be pulled through. That That is not mapped will not be pulled through. Okay. All you have to do is click import and create. Let's see what happens after this. There we go. Your custom audience for customer list has been created. This is really, really a quick video that I'm trying to shove into such a space of time. Once that is done, now you can see we've created the various uh, customer custom audiences, should I say, one for website vis visitors, one for your customer list that you currently have that you can use to retarget for future purposes. Um, they will be populating, so give them a few hours to obviously sort that out. And then once it might have an estimated figure for you, you can start running the ads. Um, you can obviously start running the ads immediately, but uh, try and stick them into a suggestion under the audience, um, Advantage Plus audience. That's my suggestion. So yes, I know that was a very, very quick rundown about everything. I tried to jam as much information over the past few years of experience in such a quick space of time, but that is just the gist of it. I mean, you can obviously go and play inside of custom audiences and go and set up as many as you'd like because you can go and have fun there. I mean, it's really open to you and your imagination about how you want to collect customers. However, I'm going to leave a few extra links somewhere around this video or below regarding step-by-steps for each category or each source. So we're going to make split videos about that. So if you have something very specific that you want to make a custom audience for, we're going to then make that video for you and you can go, go have a look at that uh, just to help you get there quicker. All right. So thank you very much for watching the video. If this was at all interesting or you got help out of this video, it was valuable to you. Um, please subscribe and notify, hit the notification bell so that you can uh, be reminded the next time we launch a video like this uh, regarding meta or whatever your marketing or business needs might be. And uh, leave a comment if you'd like. Okay. And without further ado, we do have an agency uh, in our portfolio that we can help you sort out those things for your business. Should you wish to have this sorted out by someone who knows what they're doing, um, let one of our expert team members get in contact with you by looking at the links below. Thanks.